Hello and welcome back to the Dan Cave and welcome to part two of the Great Wall Hobbies 72nd scale F15E Strike Eagle build series. So part one came out a couple of weeks ago. Part one got basically all the airframe done. Uh, primed, painted, decaled and it was set aside. Uh, obviously at that kind of stage the decals were a bit of an issue. Uh, so part two is going to kind of pick up from where that left off uh, the little bit of an attempt to kind of fix some of those decal issues and then it'll be focusing on well all the dangly bits landing gear doors uh, radar weapons one or two little detail paint paint bits and then kind of the weathering stage on top of those uh, decals which will hopefully make some progress to fix. Uh, and this part will of course then bring this build series to a conclusion. So this is this is the second part and this will be the final part. So at the end of this version we'll have the completed model. And that will be uh that will be it for our contribution to the Gary Pashley Memorial build. Uh, of course this group build was, was launched uh following the sand passing of our friend at ISM, Gary Pashley. Uh so yeah, so I'm not gonna hang around. Before we head over, the usual quick reminder. If you're new here, you won't know that this is the usual reminder. But if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. If you like the video, please drop a like. And if you have any comments, stick them in the comment field below. That out of the way, let's head on over to the real action at the bench and see what happens with this F-15E. I'll come back at the end, obviously to cover a little bit of a summing up and conclusion of my thoughts on this video build. So let's head on over. So the first challenge uh, in this part is to try and do something about these very shiny decals. Uh, as you can see, they are very, very shiny. So. There's already been uh, some UMP Extra Strong used on them. So now I'm going to give them a coat of satin varnish uh, to mix that Vallejo uh, polyurethane satin with about 50% uh, UMP thinner. So been over to the spray booth. So you can see they're obviously a lot less shiny. Uh, still not perfect, but they are blended in a little bit more. Now, what that's done is that's kind of showed a little, still a little bit of silvering left on, on the decal. So uh, the next step is to go back again, uh, slice through that top surface, particularly around the panel lines, uh, using a sharp scalpel blade. Obviously very gently because you just want to go through the decal surface and not through the paint surface as well. And I'm going to get some UMP Extra Strong Decal Solution and brush it over the decal surface then you want to get you want to give that a little bit of time to work uh to get it under kind of where you slice through the decal and hopefully address some of the silvering issues more hope than expectation at this stage because uh, these decals are pretty pretty bad so after a little bit of drying time using cocktail stick just to uh, remove any excess and we'll let that decal solution continue to work. So all that excess is mopped up, but the little bit of remnants will hopefully just pull those decals a little bit further down onto the surface. And as you can see, after a little bit of work, they are improving, they're still not perfect. But I think it's about as good as I'm going to get. So after a little bit of drying time, uh, the next step is to use a UMP uh, thinny buffer. Just to try and ease the edge of the decals down a little bit. Uh, just to make them less pronounced because it's quite a thick film as well. Uh, and that will hopefully just add a little bit more improvement to the look of them. So basically all the kind of clear film is done around the kit. So once that's done, uh, it's time to start popping on to all the other bits that need to be done. The first of which is the exhausts. 
so the afterburner cans and the exhausts uh, so they're made up of a number of parts there's these uh, exhaust parts with, which will sit inside the fuselage uh, and then there's the external afterburner cans which are each made up of one two three four parts each uh, so the usual process cleaning up those sprue attachment points uh, make sure there's no obvious seam lines uh, the in kind of inner part of the cans are made up of three parts uh, I would assume that's to make them easier to mold I would imagine uh, certainly the level of detail on them is, is pretty good for a 70 second scale uh, quite impressed with these so again same process clip them all off the sprue a little bit of clean up uh, pop the side pieces in place and using a little bit of extra thin uh, just to weld them in place uh, so that's done on both sides of each uh, afterburner can and again just let that capillary reaction of the Tamiya Extra Thin do its work just make sure they are positioned uh, as precisely as possible so once they're done and after a little bit of clean up of any seams uh, the final part of the afterburner can, which I guess is the 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 actuators uh, that can go on the outside, and once again a little bit of time yeah, extra thin just to run around the join line. Easy to do, and that's done for both parts as you would expect. So once they are all uh, neatly cemented together, the next step will be to get them mounted suitably so they can be primed and painted. So all completely assembled, glue is pretty much dry now and slightly blurred, but you can see the level of detail on those cans. So now I've got a couple of couple of coffee stirs with some double sided tape provides a perfect mounting surface for each of the parts. So obviously you're making sure to get the parts mounted on a non painted side. Uh, so you don't have to go back and do any touch ups later on. So they'll be airbrushed off screen and we'll come back to those a little bit later on. So landing gear also needs to be done. Uh, so each landing gear there are a number of parts uh, we're starting off with the nose gear uh, the wheel itself is molded in a single piece and there is a separate piece on the leg itself which needs to be glued in place with some extra thin so again the, the cleanup work on these is very delicate uh, they are very well molded for 70 second scale they do look the part once they're painted with a little bit of detail paint a little bit of weathering they should look really good uh main gear wheels made up of two parts the legs themselves i think are made up of three parts each but again using some tammy extra thin just to glue the two halves of the wheel together Just using a little bit of force on them as well just to make sure that they are securely glued together and bare minimum of a seam line along the wheels so as with the nose gear there's some very very delicate cleanup work needed on some of these parts they are very fragile this kind of cleanup work you need to be very careful to make sure that you don't bend or break any of the parts Once they're nicely cleaned up, uh, those parts will glue in place. Once again, with a little bit of extra thin, just to run into the join line between them. And then the final little part on the main gear leg. So a little bit of manipulation with the tweezers, just to get it at the right angle. 
pop it in place. And a couple of dabs of extra thin to secure that part in place. So once that's done, just use a uh, little co crocodile clip. And that's the part mounted for painting as well. And then the same process on the other landing gear leg. So now that those parts are prepped, I also need to prep the undercarriage bays on the main airframe itself as well, because they need to be painted white. Uh, so I'm just using a piece of masking tape over the undercarriage bay and basically just using the outline uh, of the undercarriage as a guide for a sharp scalpel blade. Just cut through the masking tape. Ever so carefully, you don't want to damage any of the, the kind of main body color of the aircraft. And you want to try and get as sharp an edge as possible. So in this case, I think I'm actually using a slightly older scalpel blade, so it's not quite as sharp. Uh, so I'm not quite getting the sharp edge I want. But it's eh, it's close enough. So as you can see, it just pulls off like that, and just using the Tamiya decal scissors just to clean up and trim any of the excess away that I need to. And then do exactly the same for the other undercarriage bay. And then, of course, it's a case of blocking out all the rest of uh, the underside to reduce any risk of overspray. Uh, get it over to the spray booth, paint it. I think the landing gears were painted at the same time. Uh, once that's given a few minutes drying time using acrylic paint, uh, I can start to remove all that masking tape. And as you can see, the result is some nicely painted undercarriage base. So the, the legs themselves, there's a little bit of detail painting required, uh, a little bit of silver paint on the the oleos, on the nose gear, I think on the main gear as well. Uh, and I think I painted the lenses for the light silver as well. But again, easy to do with a very fine brush. Uh, I think in this case I'm using a... I can't remember what brush I've used. Oh, it's an army painter brush. There we go. So there's the exhaust that were painted up earlier. So they were painted up using uh, Amos Jet Engine's color set. Uh, they are acrylics. The pigment sizes are not brilliant. Uh, but with a little bit of kind of variation of the colors on them, it seems to have a reasonably good effect. So then the... Wheels and tires are then painted. It's so obviously the center of the wheels are painted white. Uh, and then it's just some black paint for the tires themselves. Uh, so again, very fine brush from uh, Army Painter just to run around that edge, make sure it's nicely defined. Again, just take your time. Uh, it's easy enough to make a little mistake at this stage and I can make it look very, very messy. Of course, if you don't want to if brush paint them, there are usually uh, paint mask sets available uh, for these. So that's the undercarriage and exhausts done. That done, can now move on to all the other ordnance. Uh, so I've gone with a load that was shown in the instructions, which is a little bit of a, I suppose, an asymmetric load. Uh, so we've got, I think it's two sidewinders, one AMRAM, one of the large laser guided bombs and then one other bomb which i can't remember exactly what it is uh, i'll try and remember it as we go through or i'll have a look at scale mates uh while simultaneously 
uh, doing the voiceover. So each of the sidewinders made up of kind of the main body, and then there's a couple of separate parts for two of the fins. Again, obviously, that's to kind of mold them a little bit better. Uh, so it's the usual kind of cleanup process using a UMP thinny stick. Uh, these are absolutely perfect for this kind of job. There's not much of a seam line on the parts. They are actually pretty well molded. Um, once I'm happy with the seam line, I can then just glue uh, the rear fins in place. Uh, just make sure you don't get any glue on your fingers because you will leave gluey fingerprints. So I said, I think there's two sidewinders and one AMRAM. Uh, there is, of course, then a rather large laser gun bomb. And I am looking to see what the other weapon is. And I'm looking on scale mates simultaneously as doing the voiceover, which could end in disaster. Uh, oh, F-15 Eagle. There we go. See if I've got the instructions. So the instructions are on scale mates because I may have been them already. Let's see what was that full. So I believe the large bomb, large laser guided bomb, is a GBU twenty four, and this other large bomb that I'm working on now is a GBU fifteen. That's a TV guided bomb. Interesting. So yeah, so this will result in a asymmetric load, which I thought looked quite interesting. Uh, so it also matches what's shown for a shark mount scheme, which is which is what I've gone with. So once all those parts are painted up, uh, so they're all painted off screen, uh, various colors, there are a number of decals to go on each of the ordnance pieces, uh, which is always a nice addition on the decal sheet. Uh, a lot of kits don't do it, so you end up doing some kind of manual painting, but at least this got some of the stencil data. So here I'm showing, uh, just adding the, the kind of larger decal to the AMRAM, which includes some of the striping that will wrap right the way around. Now, because of the issues I had with the decals in the previous part, uh, I'm going straight for the UMP Extra Strong uh, on this decal. So I'm just getting it nicely lined up. As you can see, it's a little bit thick. It doesn't naturally curve round, but I'll attack it with some UMP Extra Strong. And that will get that decal to conform around. And as you can see with that UMP Extra Strong, it's not having a huge effect on these decals. They are very, very tolerant uh, to decal solutions. And then there's a couple of other little stencil marks which go on the forward part of the AMRAM in this case. So again, just get it in place, a little bit of extra strong on it. And we'll come back with the kind of usual process of mopping up any excess with, with some cotton buds. So with all that done, uh, essentially is now that the weathering process can start. So we basically, we've done landing gear, we've done the weapons, uh, we've done the exhaust. So now I'm going to add a little bit of a dark wash to the exhaust just to help bring out uh, some of the very fine engraved detail on these. So just a little bit of wash allowed to flow into any of the kind of recesses, etc. Uh, and that should help pop out that detail a little bit more. 
So now there's a huge amount of kind of wash that needs to go on the main airframe. So I'm going to speed all this footage up. Uh, it's the kind of standard process of washing that I, I like to use. Uh, I don't just let it run into the uh, the recesses. I like to kind of brush it on because when I remove it, it does leave, I suppose, <clears throat> what you might call it kind of a staining effect, a little bit of a filtering effect. Uh, but yeah, you can sit back and watch. We'll play a little bit of music. So enjoy the weathering process for a couple of minutes. So as you can see, the, the end of that process is, uh, it's not a stark panel wash, but it gives, I don't know, a, a suitable kind of filtered effect. So what I've done now is I've added uh, a couple of drops of oil paint uh, using some ammo oil brushers, uh, using kind of a buff tan tones, which I'm going to just add some kind of random streaking effects. Uh, so what I'm starting off doing is a place the dots using a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. I'm gradually kind of working those into uh, very faint kind of streaks. Uh, sort of quite obvious at this stage, but I'm going back in with a, co with a cotton bud just to try and remove the excess. So essentially I'm just leaving a bit of a stained streak effect. So again, it just adds a little bit of color variation to the surface. A little bit of tonal variation. You could spend hours adding colors and colors on top of this, but in 70 second scale, I don't think it's necessary. So just a little bit of color change does add 
uh, so again following a similar process on the underside uh, i've used a couple of different colors uh, from the oil brushers range again just adding a few dots uh, using a slightly wider brush this time because i want maybe a slightly more i suppose almost dusty effect on the underside to kind of show where you know dust from tarmac etc concrete has been kicked up and kind of stained the underside a little bit uh, again ultimately i'm aiming for a very subtle effect on this as you can see it's starting off at the moment it, it's quite a you know a stark contrast you can see it very very clearly but i'm just kind of working that with with this kind of blending brush uh, using a little bit of odorless mineral spirits just to spread that effect around and those kind of combined kind of tan brown colors uh, do add a little bit more of a tint or filter uh, to the underside of the airframe so again just kind of moving those streaks around using cotton bud again using a little bit of odorless mineral spirits that kind of removes any excess but leaves behind that kind of clear staining effect so it, it's kind of a i don't know it, it's aiming for a subtlety but visible at the same time uh once that's kind of where i wanted a little bit of a wipe with some kitchen roll also then kind of removes any further excess and overall i'm, I'm pretty happy with kind of how that's come out So that kind of stage of the weathering done, uh, we've seen the wash come on, we've added some kind of oil, a uh, little bit of oil paint as well. Uh, it's now pretty much time to get on with kind of doing a lot of the final assembly steps. So a little bit of a clear up of the work area, uh, just to get rid of any excess kind of materials and waste. Uh, we can start that by adding uh, the radar, the nose cone. So that comes in two parts there's the kind of main body of the radar and then there's the kind of dish that sits on the front as well so a little bit of ca glue and they will attach nicely in place landing gear can then be added uh so that's all all again been painted weathered uh, wheels have now been put on the gear the gears themselves and they can be popped uh, into their undercarriage bays as shown uh, the nose cone itself can be added uh, so i'm leaving that in the open position just like so and you can kind of see in that picture how the nose cone is a slightly lighter shade of gray because uh, it is made from a different material from the rest of the airframe uh underwing pylons can be added so the weapons have been mounted to those as well and that's using a little bit of ca glue and there we go that's the uh kind of main weapons on the wing added we've then got the center pylon mounted equipment and then there's the addition of that laser guided bomb uh, on the what you call them shoulder rails certainly on the the weapon stations on the conformal fuel tanks uh, a little bit more ca glue on the inside of the exhausts and those jet exhausts that were painted and weathered earlier can be added they just slot straight in just like so so in around the canopy area because the 
the canopy glass was uh, was glued on with some PVA glue at the very early stage for the paint stage. Uh, that's now been removed. There is a little bit of touch up around the uh, the rim of the cockpit. Uh, so I'm just using a little bit of, I think it's Ravel Anthracite. So not a pure black, just a very, very dark gray. Uh, just hand brushing that in place. Uh, again, using a very fine detail brush. Just slowly working my way around uh, the edge of the cockpit. Uh, using my other hand to steady as well. Uh, always a good tip for doing any detailed painting. Get your subject fixed. You can use your other hand as a steadying post. And just continue my way around. Uh, check to make sure I've not missed any bits. Possibly stop to have a chat with someone as well. But overall, it's beginning to come together and look shape. And look in good shape, I guess. And then just clean off the brush when you're done. So as you can see, those decals are still a little bit visible. Uh, it's probably the biggest letdown of this kit is the fact that those decals are still visible at this stage, despite all the kind of efforts that went into to doing them. I mean, ultimately, the best approach would have been to cut the stencils out or use an aftermarket set. I would definitely advise uh, if anyone else is doing this kit to consider an aftermarket set. So, one thing I almost forgot, so using a little bit of silver and a little bit of the black is just to paint uh, the gun, basically. Just the tip of that gun. I almost forgot to do it. And judging by the editing on this video, uh, I forgot that I left this bit in as well. But nevertheless, uh, that is painted, again, just using a detail brush. And once again, I'm just having a look around to make sure that I've not missed any other uh, little small parts that may need a drop of uh, silver paint on them. However, there is none that I can find at this stage. So once again, that brush can be cleaned up. And once again, we get a chance to stay here at that poor uh, decal finish on the top surface of this kit. I mean, I think I think if the decals had been good, uh, I would be raving about how good this kit is. It is a letdown. You know, it's not a cheap kit. It is the most disappointing part. However, with all those little tiny details done, uh, there's now a chance to add the air brake. It's the final addition, which is the canopy glass itself, uh, which is in the open position. Very gently put in place, uh, one tiny little dot of CA glue. And that is it. That, that is the model completed. So let's go have a look at some of the final pictures of the kit. So I guess overall I am I am pretty happy with the result. Uh, as I've said a number of times, the, the decals and the instructions let this kit down, the decals especially. Uh, it was a disappointment. Uh, but other than that, the, the assembly of this kit was, was spot on, and I was very, very pleased with it. So let's go back to me. So there we have it. That was it. That is uh, that's the F-15E done. Part two completed. And the video series completed. So we're done.
So, what are your thoughts on this kit? Uh, I think I enjoyed the kit. Yeah, I enjoyed the kit. The kit's really good. Uh, I didn't have the fit issues that, that I know some people had. I didn't have some of the other little issues that people had. A few people had some canopy issues. Uh, my only real big complaint with this kit is the standard from the instructions. They are awful instructions. Very, very hard, very poorly presented. The multiple kind of fold out pages, the uh, some of the inaccuracies in there, just the build sequence is a little bit illogical in there. It's not easy to follow. That's fair enough. You can manage with that, you know, if you build a few models. But for a beginner, that will be very, very difficult to deal with. Uh, and then it's it's the decals themselves. Uh, they they were pretty atrocious. And I mean, I mean even you know so so in the kit there's basically two sheets. There's all the stencil data on one sheet, and then there's the kind of main markings on another sheet. Uh, the main markings actually went down pretty okay. It's all the stencil data where they've combined stencils and some other kind of placards on the aircraft onto one big kind of piece of clear backing. And the clear decal film is very hard to work with, incredibly shiny, resulted in a lot of silvering. Now that's not down to not putting a gloss coat. It for me it just seems to just be a poor decal material. Uh and that's you know that's what we've got, sadly. Uh could have gone for aftermarket. It's always a possibility. Uh, there's plenty of schemes out there. Uh, I think it was even offered some aftermarket for this, and I chose to stick with the kit decals. I kind of like the shark net scheme. Uh, probably a little bit of regret on that because I think it would have been better with some aftermarket decals on it. But there we go. Uh, I kind of stuck with it. I think they look okay. Kind of look at it in the right light. I mean, I think in the photos it kind of looks okay. But, you know, when you look at the model, you look in the right light. That decal film is still clearly obvious. Uh, hasn't quite settled in as much as I kind of wanted. Or hoped, shall we say. But there we go. The, the kit is done. It, it's It's got pride of place up in the kind of modelling shelf just up there. Uh, I think I've knocked a bit off already putting it up there. But that's kind of part and parcel of heavy models you knock bits off so there we go so thanks for watching if you're new here don't forget to subscribe please uh don't get to hit the like button if you like the video if you have any comments stick them in the text below uh if not uh again thank you all for watching uh thank you all for for being subscribers those that are if you're not please do so there'll be plenty more videos like this and the other stuff that I build uh, in the Dan Cave. So uh, thank you all again and see you in the next video, which I think will be one of the Suzuki parts. Not sure which order they come out in, but it'll definitely be one of the Suzuki parts that will come out soon. Uh, so yeah, so thank you all and see you in the next video. See you later. Bye bye.